Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 118 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a weekend full of a meetup game at Georgetown Poker Club in Texas. If you'd like to get straight to the live stream portion of the video, go to this time. Otherwise, we have a lot of content to go over, so we're going to just roll the tape. All right, so we traveled to Texas for our first time ever, going to our first meetup game in another state ever. The location of this game will be Georgetown Poker Club. Really fun to travel and experience new locations. And when we finally enter, we get to meet the owners of the club. Shout out to Corey, Drew, and Johnny. Great bunch of dudes. Definitely made me feel welcomed and had a lot of fun playing with them. And we have a whole weekend packed full of fun activities displayed on this awesome poster they made. Decorations in this club definitely add to the fun environment. And we're getting ready for our first cash game session. On the first day, 1-2 was the only game running, but I happily turned a $400 buy-in into $600 pretty quickly before a few hands of note. We're playing 1-2, but it's Texas, so these pots get definitely bigger than your average 1-2 game. I'm under the gun. I raise to $10 with pocket queens. One middle position player calls, and then a late position player raises to $75. Yes, the old 7.5x raise. As my opponent started the hand with only about $400, I think that it's plenty fine to just get it in here now. I think my opponent just has ace-king here a lot of the time, but I don't see myself not having the ability to get it in on basically any runout that I like. Players in Georgetown just unwilling to fold, so I think I can just take a flop and then decide if I want to get it in from there. So I make the call. The player behind makes the call as well, so we're going three ways to a flop of ace-king-8. Rainbow. Pretty much the worst flop in the world for a pocket queen, so glad I just called it didn't rip pre. When we check to the aggressor, he goes all in for about a 1.5x pot bet, and I guess some of the times he could be turning 10s, jacks, maybe a random pocket fives into a bluff, but this is just not the board or the hand that I'm gonna test those waters with, so I let it go. A hand that I unfortunately did not get on camera was against one of the owners, Drewster, shout out to him. I raised to $10 with pocket threes. There's one caller, he in later position raises to 35. A later position player calls, I call limper calls. So we're four ways to a flop of queen 10 three with two spades. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful board. It checks all the way to Drew the aggressor who bets $110. And this is a board where I think you should get it all in. There are so many cards that can hit the turn that are just gonna kill your action. Completing straights, completing flushes, making a hand like ace queen or pocket kings, not willing to put in more money if a scary connected card goes. So I go in for approximately $500. It folds all the way to Drew, who thinks for a bit, but then calls. When the other player folds, I show my hand and he chuckles saying that he's drawing dead. Great sport, the whole table's laughing, whole table's having fun with this development. And I assume he had a hand like ace queen, so not totally drawing dead, but pretty slim. We get a clean run out and we build a pretty massive stack in a one two game. I cash out of my first session here up $550 pretty good return on investment. One hand that was interesting that I got on camera, just to kind of show the wild Texas action here at Georgetown Poker Club. Here we have two players all in pre and a side pot brewing. And a flop of jack eight, four, all clubs. We see the two remaining players get it all in. So over a 2K pot on a 1-2 table, I'd say is pretty good. And the run out is a jack and a 10 of clubs. We see pocket nines, queen jack, ace king one club. And I just thought this hand was a great example of how crazy this action is here. But we're gonna quickly jump ahead to day three, a $200 tournament. A bracelet provided by the room for the first place finisher. I do not consider myself a tournament expert, but we're gonna, still going to fire and see if we can't make something happen. In the 100-200 level, I raised to $500 with pocket sixes and only the big blind calls, so we're heads up to a flop of jack 5-6. Great, great board for me. Hoping I could just get value from a jack, I bet 800. My opponent decides to call. Turn is the eight of spades. Not a very scary card. Don't expect my opponent to have exactly seven nine all that often, so should still have the best hand. Gonna continue betting 1500. Definitely gotta accumulate chips in a tournament whenever you have the opportunity to. My opponent calls again. Rivers four of spades. Now making a one liner and spades come through. Not a very good run out. I'm not exactly sure what can pay off a bet here or if any 
hands will. However, it is a tournament. I have a set. I do think I have to go for value here, but I bet very small. I bet 2,000, and my opponent calls very quickly. Sixes are good on this one, so we chip up a little bit. Several levels later, nothing too interesting happens. I chip down a little bit, only at 30,000. At the 500, 1,000 blind levels, I have 30,000 in chips. An early position player opens to 4,000. There's one caller, and I'm in late position with pocket nines. I think it's a great spot to increase my chip stack substantially. If I rip and everyone fold, I get a 33% stack increase. And if someone calls, I'm likely flipping. So we can happily get in 30 big blinds with this configuration, pocket nines. So I jam all in. The opponent who made it 4,000 tanks for a while, counts it out, puts it aside, thinks about it, but then eventually calls. And the other player that called 4,000 calls as well. So there's a side pot possibility. And we're hoping for a safe flop. Ace, eight, deuce is not the one I'm looking for. Even more so when the preflop aggressor decides to open jam. When the other player folds, we have to show our cards. It's a tournament, and he does indeed have ace-king. Don't know why he tanked so long pre with that. But we have outs. Just not this time. Whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. But we jump back into the cash game streets. We get aces against tens all in pre for a good profitable day. Happy about that. And then day two of my trip, I was invited into the commentator's booth to commentate a pretty juicy 10-25 game. Would just like to share the two most interesting hands of that day. In the first one, we see Jay Wynn, a Texas crusher and fellow vlogger, get it all in with Kings against Corey, one of the partners at Georgetown Poker Club with Ace King. And we will see a run out. Oh, I see we're diving in the windows. Could get yep. interesting. The big, biggest part of the night, seven over seven. Oh, oh two, two diamonds. diamonds. Oh, oh, but King, King, King is oh. live. Wow. Wow, okay. Yeah, brutal beat for Jay Wynn. You know, ace King is the hand you're hoping you're against a lot of the time when, you're, when you have Kings. You know, high equity spot, but I, I like just does not go his way on this one. Months. And then the second hand is due to back raises, three bets, four bets, all that stuff. We get three players all in pre, with none of these players having premiums, or even what most people would consider upper tier hands. So interesting development to see a nearly 15k pot where the best hand is ace deuce. And we're gonna see how that one comes out. You typically don't see this play. Yeah, <laughs> multi-way uh, without a big hand per se. I mean, I really like the Jack 10 suited. I mean, they're all suited, but. And shout out to the dealers here, man. They're excellent. Like, they get the pots right so quickly. Yeah. They're very good, very fast, very professional. I could never be a dealer. <laughs> yeah, they have a tough job, and they do it fantastic. Here it is. Here. There's a six. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> you, you hear the scream seven. Oh. Ten. Oh, Alex. I think that's going to hold, right? Tens oh. are good. Wow. Tens are good. Tens were decent on the flop, too. Had an eight for a gut shot. Like, they picked up. They had a decent board for them. That's why I said Jack-10 has plenty of playability. And wow. Alex is going to win a $14,000 pot with Jack-10. That is our biggest pot of the evening. But now it's the main event for me. I'm getting into a 1-2-5 round and round streamed game. It's going to be massive. It's Texas. All these crushers are here. And wish us luck. Everyone starts in with 1k, that's the max buy but it's max the stack, so I expect there to be plenty of 3 and 4k stacks very quickly. Who do you think is going to be the big winner tonight? Uh, the big winner tonight could be Jared, uh, but uh, I think Jared has a good try, uh, chance here of uh, having a good night tonight. What? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. On the first hand of note. Under the gun raises to $15, there's one caller. I look down at pocket fours, think it's fine to set mine, can make a massive, massive profit if we connect. Two other late position player calls, so we're going five ways to a flop of queen, queen, eight. When the preflop aggressor checks and the plus one player checks, 
I think this is a board where I could easily just bet and win. Not too many players should have a queen here, and eight could theoretically fold. If I have a queen, I'm pretty much nutted and unbeatable. I have a relatively tight image at this table through all my playing previously. So we're going to put a bet out there. Shout out to Kyle. He came all the way uh, from Florida for the stream. He's, um, he's a blogger, so look him up, guys. Um, his name is Kyle Fischel. You can look him up on YouTube. He has a pretty good blog. And he does win the first one. He picks up that pot uh, being a... So we win our first hand pretty quickly, and we soar to the top of the leaderboard. But now it's a round of PLO. If you've watched my vlog, there's not been many PLO episodes, meaning zero. But I still think that I can play with these guys, so we're gonna, we're gonna stick it out. With a raise to 20, I looked down at ace, ace, king, nine with suited hearts. Still not being a PLO expert, I do believe that this is a pretty good hand in PLO. So I'm going to three about this one. No need to pot because I actually want to control the pot a little bit, but definitely still want to raise. So I just three exit to 60. Two other opponents call, hoping to just see an ace high board where this can be an easy decision. That does not happen. Queen, nine, deuce, rainbow. Actually very dry and unconnected. When my two opponents check to me, I think one pair is not good enough to throw out a bet, especially in PLO. So I'm going to check this one back, hopefully get the showdown as cheaply as possible. Aces could be good some of the time. And when the turn is the six of diamonds, also what I perceive to be a very disconnected card. There are no straights that are available yet, and if my opponents have like two pair, I still have an over pair to suck out on them. I do also have a pair of nine, so if a third nine hits the river, it still could be good. But when an opponent bets $190... I decide that I can't fold aces just yet, and the under the gun player calls as well, so really just hoping for an ace or a nine here would be very helpful. However, the river is the eight of spades. This time under the gun leads for pot, and the moment thinking that I'm just gonna call and see my aces because again, I'm not really a PLO player. About the exact moment where I realized that jack 10, which is the only straight draw on the flop, completes with that eight, the third opponent calls, which makes my decision three times is easier and I can just let it go. And Jack 10 is indeed gonna win this pot. Corey, with the little nice quick comeback here, wins a nice pot uh, very quickly. This is a third hand in, I think, in PLO hand yeah, in. Yeah, so. fourth hand in, and you see a stack are just crushing the table, going from one seat to the other. Yeah. It's gonna be a fun stream tonight, guys. Tune in. So we're down a little bit in this PLO game, but we're definitely gonna continue with two limps, I look down at ace, jack, 10, nine, nut, spade variety. Another hand which I consider to be pretty good in PLO. I'm just gonna limp, not gonna raise because I'm not super knowledgeable about perfect PLO ranges. I like Kyle's hand here, ace, jack, 10, nine with nut, spades. That's a pretty looking hand. Yeah, I would like Kyle to come in for a race here in the cutoff here and uh, and uh, juice up the pot here. Not necessarily thin out the field because most people don't fold in PLO yeah. preflop, but it's it's definitely got a good hand in here to make a raise. And, uh... yeah, three, three, three. But when Corey raises to 25 and all the opponents decide to call, happy to get it in here. Now the pot's a decent size. I believe I have a decent hand with plenty of nut potential. So we're gonna continue. We're going four ways to a flop of ace, king, nine, two hearts. Corey decides to continue with about $75 and one opponent calls to me. I do think it's possible at this point that he just has ace king, which would be pretty bad for me, especially because I have ace nine, a hand that I don't really think can fold. But I do have some nut potential still. Any queen gives me the nuts. Any nine should give me the best hand. And I do have one heart blocker, so I don't think I can fold when I flop a hand this good. So I decide to make the call. Turn is a seven. In my mind, it should not change anything too much. And Corey continues again, this time for $300, and it folds to me. I was actually going to fold here. I just give my opponent credit for ace-king, maybe pocket-king sometimes. But after a few seconds of thinking, I then realized that the eight and the queen give me the nuts. So the seven picking me up the double gutter definitely leads me to a more happy call. He needs an ace, a nine, an eight, or a queen here to improve. So, but it cannot be the heart, though. It cannot it be a heart because Corey's got a heart. And I guess I hope we can get lucky on this one. The river is the ace of diamonds, giving me the second nuts. <sighs> and you can see my opponent bets $500. Definitely puts me all in. I actually think my opponent has ace-king here, but... 
even at the table, I say, I have the second nuts, I can't fold. I'm thinking I'm against ace king, but luckily, second nuts beat third nuts of ace seven. Unlucky for Corey, but very fortunate for me. Did not know I was drawing for 17%. These bad beats here, uh, early bad beats for Corey, that's rough because, um, you know, uh, Kyle has to have ace nine or ace king there, but you imagine ace king is probably going to race the flop or the turn here, so effectively only loses to like ace nine here, so. Yeah. Nice pot for Kyle here, and very unfortunate for Corey here in this this um, river card here that gave him Mesa's full as well. Next interesting hand. Dante clearly wants to raise to 25, but throws one chip in, makes it a $5 call. I look down at ace four, five four, double suited. This is again a hand that most PLO players with experience would probably raise, but I've already seen Dante want to raise, so I don't really want to pot it, get repotted and really have no idea where I'm at. So I choose to just call. Corey does not disappoint Dante. He raises to $30. And similar to the last hand, all the limp side to call. So we are five ways to a flop this time. Where we flop the nut spade draw. And I guess a pair of fives. But really, I'm just playing spades here. It checks to me. Not going to bet. Don't want to get raised. Want to pot control as much as possible against four other players. And technically, 16 other cards out there. So... We are definitely going to check. Johnny Poker with two pair decides to bet $150. And when two other opponents call, I just, I guess I think this is a good spot to call. I'm getting great odds. If I hit my flush, it'd be fantastic. And if the turn like pairs the board or something, I think I could just happily fold and think I played the hand fine. But when I make the call, the turn is the jack of spades. We turn the actual nuts in a massive PLO game. I don't think there's a better feeling out there. When it checks to me, as there's four other opponents, I have the nuts currently. There's a plethora of sets and two pairs, which I don't want to check through and have the board pair and have no idea where I'm at or possibly lose the nuts. And the pot's pretty big, so I'm just going to lead donk pot it because I don't play PLO and I have the nuts. So pretty simple ABC poker. I have good hand. I bet a lot. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? And it gets nearly everyone to fold except the last player. And truthfully, I'm just hoping he folds here. I assume he's thinking with some kind of set or two pair. I really didn't think he'd be thinking with another flush, especially one of only eight high. And after nearly a minute of thinking, he eventually puts all his chips in. And I have to kind of ask the dealer if that's a call or a raise because I knew it was pretty close. It eventually was a slight raise, so I obviously make the call. Ask him to run it twice because I assume he has a set. My opponent agrees to, and I just show the nuts, and he just says he's drawing dead. We already agreed to run it twice, so we're going to see two unnecessary boards. Sounds like that. Kyle's going to scoop a $2,300 pot. Yeah. Alex is going to rebuy here after after losing the last hand there. Tough, tough hand there, and uh, Corey with a the, the good fall there on the turn. Yeah. Definitely worked out quite well for me. And now I sit massively at the top of the leaderboard after two really big PLO hands in a game that I really don't play. Next interesting hand. Hijack raised to 20, there's one caller. I'm in the small blind with Queen Jack 10-8. Also seems like a decent PLO hand, so I make the call. We go five ways to a flop of ace, 10 7. Again, flopping double gutted feels pretty good. Nine or a king gives me the nuts. Although diamonds are a concern, I check. Happily, this one checks through. Turn is an offsuit king. PLO is such a fun game. I bet small because I really don't see myself getting called by anything. I really should have realized that there's diamonds out there and just potted it and made any flush draw pay to see because these people simply do not fold. But in the time, I bet 50. Folds to Corey, he's the only caller. Everyone else folds, and the river pairs the board. Card I really don't want to see. I check, happily I made the pot relatively small, and my opponent checks back, queen jack is good. Another small PLO pot. So, for your... Oh, we're betting on the... On the massage, yeah. Okay, cheers. And my stack is doing very good. In for 1k, have about 3.2 in front of me, feeling great about this round and round game. Before the next hand of note. I have ace queen jack 10, ace of hearts again what I assume is a good PLO hand. I actually raised this one to 40. 
I'm on the button and it's folded to me. It seems reasonable. Um, Johnny Poker and Corey both call. So we're three ways to a flop. Flop is queen high and super dry. This is going to be one of the few times where I think a top pair is good enough to bet. I've been super tight. I've only shown the nuts. So when it checks to me, I'm just going to bet $75. Hopefully get some folds or thin the field. And we get two folds. So got what I consider a bluff through in PLO. So that's also super fun. Next interesting hand. $10 straddles on. With one call, I call with queen 10 nine eight three diamonds definitely a hand i don't think it's good enough to raise but i think it's good enough to call very connected has plenty of nut potential well we go seven ways to a flop of seven seven three two diamonds now having three diamonds i think is relatively good makes it less likely i'm against other flush draws i'd say but i still don't have a hand good enough to bet so when it checks to me i check checks all the way around Turns the nine of spades. Gives me a pair, gives me open-ended, gives me a flush draw. I feel pretty good about my hand. Well, JD pots it for 70 and it folds to me. I think about it for a little bit and I just decide that if my hand ever connects, I'll never actually know if I'm good or not. My flush is probably not good anyway. So I make, I guess, an okay fold. Kyle, my call here. Nope, he gets out of the way. Good discipline fault. He had a top pair with nine, open ended, and a queen half flush roll, but it is a pair board, so he just has to just get out of the way. That's a good fold. And we still sit pretty high on the leaderboard, happy with that one. And now we get our first Texas double board PLO bomb pot. One of the great attractions of this Texas world is that you can play PLO bomb pots. My hand is queen 10, 9, 7, double suited. I'd say also pretty good. When I flop top two pair on top and the second nut flush draw and a pair on bottom, I think having a good hand on both boards is a great spot to start betting. So I bet $50 consistent with my entire strategy of never really potting it, always kind of betting small. Well, two different opponents decide to call. When spades complete on the top board and the bottom board does not improve me at all, I decide to check. Luckily it checks through. And the rivers get worse for me as now with a deuce on top and he over pair counterfeits my two pair. I did not actually make a flush on the bottom board. Guess it's happy that I didn't because Alex had a better flush waiting for me. But luckily it checks through and I get to chop my first double board PLO bomb pot. And let's see the winnings here. Cal is up the most. Um, he's our featured guest. Um, happy for him. He's up uh, 2300 But now we're at a hold him hand. Early position raised to $20 with pocket aces. I don't know that as I call with ace 10 off suit. Would like to get some hold'em hands into the vlog. Two other players calls so were four ways to a flop of 994. When the preflop aggressor checks to me, I think similarly to the fours hand, ace high is good here a lot of the time. All the random suited connectors and gappers will likely just fold. Maybe some small pocket pairs will fold to multiple bullets. So I bet $35. Only the preflop aggressor calls and has me drawing dead. Turn is the king of diamonds. Card that I think connects to him a lot. I think he floats with a lot of ace, king, king, queens. So when he checks to me, I check it back. River's a four. So if I had any kind of connectivity on the flop, a bet here might get some pocket pairs to fold as all flop connection is now a full house. But when he checks to me, I think ace high has enough shut on value to just check it back. Middling hearts missed and having the ace of hearts means that ace high might be good here. It is not. My opponent had pocket aces and Happy this was not an ace or 10 high board. Next interesting hand. There's an under the gun straddle. I raise to $35 with ace king off suit. Alex three bets to $100 and it folds all the way to dirty who makes the call. When it folds to me, I consider four betting, but I'm in very early position and so is Alex. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of credit for having a hand. Additionally, there hasn't been a whole lot of Texas Hold'em hands here in Texas. And the ones that we did play were Really pretty quick and passive as everyone just want to get back to Omaha. So I'm going to just call this one. When the flop is ace high, I feel very good about my hand. I check to the pre-flop three better, who bets $125. Dirty decides that he's going to go all in for about $350. And now on this spot, I've seen Dirty shove many times with very weak holdings. Like he could literally just have a pair of nines here. And I want to put in a raise here because I think Alex is very capable of having ace, jack, ace, queen. Want to get some more money in this pot, deny flush draws, deny straight draws, all that stuff. So I'm going to go for a raise here. I raise to $700. Alex quickly folds as he had nothing. And I see the bad news of my opponent flopped aces and nines. Not going to be good for me. Runout does not help me. And 
we lose a decent sized one where a four bet pre might get it done. However, Dirty was not a folding type of gentleman. He might have just got it all in with ace nine and same results happen. Ah. And we're now second on the leaderboard. Not a great development after that Texas Hold'em hand. But that can all change with a double board PLO bomb pot. On this one, I flopped the nut diamonds on top, but there is it is double board PLO, so straight flushes are possible. And I don't really have anything on the bottom board, so we're not gonna bet for just one board right now. I check. Checks all the way to the cutoff dirty who bets 90. Not gonna fold with second nut top. So I make the call. Two other players call, so we're going we're going three ways to two turn cards. Which is a fourth diamond on top and a seven of clubs on bottom. When it checks to me, I realize that I just made the nuts on the bottom board and second nuts on the top board. So similar to the previous hands, we have strong hands. We're just going to pot it and hope that someone calls with worse diamonds or some flush draws on bottom, something like that. And we get exactly that. Alex decides to call with pocket tens on top and clubs on bottom. He's got two okay draws. Seven keeps me the nuts straight. 10 gives Alex quads. So one of his draws come through and we're gonna chop this one up. You can see I'm pretty disappointed. Had what I considered a hammer lock on, on this hand, but you know, PLO's wild, anything can happen. Happy that both of his draws didn't hit because that would be pretty devastating. Next interesting hand. An early position player raises to 40. There's one caller. I got queen jack, jack 10, double suited. I assume a three bet a lot of the time, but not a PLO player, just gonna call. Alex three bets to 220, and there's two callers, it's back to me. A hand that I assume a lot of PLO players would just wanna get it in with, but me with limited experience and not really gonna be happy with any board unless I flop a straight or exactly jack high. I decide just let this one go. And the flop gives me pretty much a wrap. You know, I had 10 jack, jack nine and I had spades. Disappointed that I folded when I see this flop, but when it checks through and the turn is another nine, I'm happy with the fold. No longer feel good about my hand. And, and Dante is going to take it down with a big bet when he has trip nines. So shout out to Dante. He was my co-commentator on the 1025 game. It's really nice to see him drag a pot. Now we're only up $1,800, trending in the wrong direction. Here's a shot of me just trying to get my cards to scan as, as I was not the best at that. We arrive at another double board PLO bomb pot, pretty much the greatest part of Texas poker. When Under the Gun bets 90, I look down at the actual nuts on the bottom board and the ace high flush draw on the top board, as well as a six blocker, which could be relevant. I'm gonna just make the call as I don't actually have a hand on top yet, and any board pairing on bottom would make my hand pretty useless. The small blind decides to tag along, and we are three ways to two turn cards which is a six and a four. This time when both players checked to me, I think this is definitely the time to go for what I guess is a semi-bluff. It's not about money. It's about sending a message. Retaining the nuts on the bottom board and having the nut draw on the top, I think is good enough for a bet. Because it's a four liner, I don't really expect my opponents to continue unless they have exactly eight, nine. And even that would be drawing not the greatest against my flush draw. Sometimes a three would also give me a straight when I get to play my deuce, but that's probably optimistic at best. Either way, taking this down now would be awesome, so I pot it $350. And then Alex decides to make the call just with the eight high straight and a flush draw. So hopefully I can bink a spade and just win this one. Ugh, queen of spades hits the wrong board. So we're gonna chop this one up again. And you can see I'm somewhat disappointed that several times not running the absolute greatest in these double board pots when I think I have a great opportunity to make some real substantial money. But we're still up 1900 so that's pretty good. Here we arrive at hand that I was not in but found interesting. Here we have Corey and Alex get it all in on the turn for 1k a piece. Corey with aces, Alex with king six. Both hands seem pretty reasonable. Turn is devastating for king six, giving Corey top set. Until the river's the queen of clubs, giving Alex the backdoor nuts. Definitely a gross one, the old suck resuck, even when Corey has the three of clubs blocker. Definitely a tough night for Corey. As you can see on this leaderboard, he's down quite a bit, but luckily for him, he gets full redemption on the next day during the 1025 game. 
In the bigger game, they get it 150 pre, four ways. Flop goes set over set. Phenomenal for Corey. Gets a $250 bet in on the flop. Turn, not the greatest. Some straights and a flush definitely completes. But luckily for him, still gets in a $600 turn bet. And on the river, deuce. Gets full house over full house. Believable. This could be a $20,000 pot. Wow. This could be $20,000. And Corey checks it. So sneaky. Obviously, Dylan doesn't put him on a better hand, right? He only loses it to three hands. And how much does Dylan make it? He probably makes it value right? Yeah, it looks a like single half nine. pot. Yeah, 1100 That's very – that's – Less than half pot. What's Corey yeah. going to do, like 4K? He's going to go 4 5K. Okay. Oh, he, he grabbed his cards like he was going to just flip it over. He couldn't believe he was raised. <laughs> Look at 4.3. What a nice sizing, too, right? Now we yeah. got a 7. Yeah, everything. Do you ever think that your opponent has 7s or 9s there? All the run bad that Corey had the other day before is going to be washed away with this hand. It's not <coughs> easy to call 3K, but he has to, and he does. $11,000 pot. I folded my big one, and I got curious, and so the sand hill came. Before we arrive at the next hand of note. With two limps, I'm on the cutoff with pocket fours. Texas Hold'em hand, I raised to $30. Four other players decide to call, so we're going five ways to a flop of 773 two diamonds. When it checks to me, I'm definitely not going to check this one back. I'm in late position. It's pretty likely that everyone just missed and I can just take it down. Additionally, I get value from diamond draws and random two over cards. So I throw out a bet of 90. Button folds and Drew or the happy whale, he decides he's going to raise to 275. I'm definitely going to call this bet. I played with Drew for a few days at this point and he likes to go very aggressive with draws. I expect him to have overs and diamonds here a lot of the time. And even as weak as like ace, 10, one diamond, he has hands like that in his range. So I'm definitely going to peel this one until Alex starts thinking for a while. And when he eventually makes a call, I fold. And as you can see, I'm really just looking at Alex. Not really too worried about Drew's hand at this point. Even more devastating when the turn is the four of spades, giving me the effective nuts as no one should ever have pocket sevens. Ta -da! It's... Even worse, both players get in $450. Ugh. Even more insulting, I river quads. So that one's definitely disappointing. Even though it goes check, check, me and Alex probably would have played a $6,000 pot on the turn if I was still in the hand. Somewhat disappointed, but luckily for me, we're still up 1800 Feel pretty good about our day. Before the next hand of note. Definitely trying to get some hold'em hands in here. Don't want this just to be a PLO vlog. So with King Jack on the hijack, I raise to $35. Corey on the button raises to $140. <laughs> a little fight now. I like that. Now because on this day, Corey was down quite a bit, I actually expect him to be three betting very light, especially from the button. Don't expect him to have a real hand here too often. Definitely going to peel one, hopefully connect with this flop, or maybe do some creative moves post-flop. But when the flop is queen 7-7 seven, seven with two spades, I just think this is a board that Corey's not going to give up on too often. If he does have ace, king, ace, queen, he's probably just not in the mood to fold at all at this point. When he bets $85 a down bet, I'm just going to let this one go, hopefully find a better spot in the future. If the board did not have a queen out there, I would be much more likely to make a move, but this one is just not exactly what I was looking for. And that was the last significant hand I played of the stream. I was up nearly 23 hours. Played nearly 10 hours at Georgetown Poker Club, both on and off stream. So it was time for me to go. Stream was supposed to last four hours. It had been over four hours, 15 minutes on the stream so far. So it's time for me to rack up and head to get some sleep. I would say that I did not leave the stream too early as the stream only lasted three more hands, but it was time for me to go. And happily booked a $1,500 profit on this stream, and that would conclude my Texas meetup game trip. You think you can steal from us and just walk away? Yeah. If you've made it all the way to this point in the video, thank you for sticking with it. I appreciate it. Definitely ran amazingly in Texas. Had a great time. If you enjoy my version of content, please consider subscribing. And I sure hope to get an invite back to Texas real soon. Thank you.